All right, everybody, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. Uh, this is going to be the end of the Kingdom of God series. I think it's number four. Uh, get your King James Bibles out and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And by the way, I'm not King James only. I also like the Webster's Bible. Yep, the dictionary guy who spoke over 20 languages and knew the Bible languages of Hebrew and Greek for the New Testament. And uh, I also like the Geneva. I don't care so much for the notes. You know, notes are just the opinions of men. So, eh, what can I tell you? And we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Now, people, uh, there's people who will tell you Paul was a false apostle. He's a false prophet. He's no good. He's a liar. And he doesn't belong in the Bible and blah, blah, blah. But I'll tell you what. Uh, well, let's, let's see what people who think about Paul, who deny Paul. All right. Uh, let's take a quick look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Now, Peter wrote 2 Peter. There's people who tell you, oh no, Peter didn't write Peter. Really? I mean, come on, you know? Like, they are smarter than the people that receive these letters, you know. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, whose promise? The Lord. According to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And I might do a Bible study on righteousness. Uh, not that I know anything about righteousness. I just know what the Bible says about it. Because, boy, there ain't, I don't have any righteousness outside of Christ. That's for sure. Wherein, uh, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, huh, Peter called, said, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as in all his epistles, Epistles, just a letter. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, which that they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see, people that deny Paul, Peter says they're unlearned, they're unstable, and they wrestle Paul as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Uh, which is why they have to deny, you know, they deny Paul, they got to deny Peter. Uh, pfft, what can I tell you? All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself. Boy, that's how I feel. I don't know anything by myself. Only thing I know is what's in the Bible. That's it. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. All right. Uh, let's see. Verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, 
and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you may be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Now ye are full, now ye are rich. And we're talking spiritually here. Uh, we're not talking Benny Hinn where, you know, a, a, a dump truck full of gold got put in your living room. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were, appointed to death. Wow, appointed to death? For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. Tell that to the prosperity preachers appointed to death. Verse 10, we are fools, fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of this world, and are the off-scouring of all things unto this day. The filth of the world. That's what Christians are becoming, people. Verse 14, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now remember, Timothy was very, very young. But you know what? You could have a uh, somebody that's 20 years old that had been raised up from the time he was five or six, learned in the ways of the Lord, that knows twice as much as somebody that's 45 years old that you know, hasn't really labored, you know, and a lot of people, uh, from what I gather, didn't respect Timothy because he was so young, but yet his uh, mother and grandmother had taught him from a very young age, and then Paul, uh, I guess you could say, put the icing on the cake. So, verse 18, now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? All right. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. Now, Corinth was a city in Greece. Keep that in mind. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, 
that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas. Who was Cephas? Cephas was uh, Peter. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. That's interesting. Judas hung himself. Who was the twelve? I don't know. I just noticed that. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. In other words, they're dead. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Now, who was James? Uh, James had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. So, guess who James grew up with? I'll give you uh, three guesses, and the first two don't count. Verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? See, that's what the Sadducees, the, uh, the temple priests were saying. They, the Sadducees were one of the sects or branches of the Jews. And they say, oh, there's no resurrection. And that's why they were sad, you see. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the get dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. Vain's just another word for worthless. Then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. So be that the dead rise not. And if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, and that's that word man, uh, if you look up that word man in the Hebrew, it's from uh, the word Adam. Uh, let's see, it's Hebrew root word 119, 120, and 121 in Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew, Adam, ruddy, to be able to show blood in the face, okay, for since by man came death, that's right, death fell upon all men, right? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. You see, but for death, uh, from Adam, death passed upon all men. But by a man... God come in the flesh, read 1 Timothy 3.16, by man, Christ, 
came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Wow. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, whom, I'm sorry, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? Did you know to this day they bap there's a group that baptizes people for the dead? I mean, how do you baptize somebody for the dead? I mean, you know, they're gone. They're dead. How do you baptize for them? Well, ask the Mormons. They will do, uh, I guess you could say by proxy. Uh, they'll pick some guy named, I don't know, George, for example. And say, George, you're going to be uh, your great great grandfather or my great great grandfather was not baptized in the Mormon church. So his name was Joe. So we're going to have you be baptized for Joe. So they baptize for the dead. Uh, I'm, I don't get it, but they were doing it back in Paul's day. I, I don't get it, but it's mentioned. Else, what shall they do? which are baptized for the dead. If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Ah, <laughs> uh, you should read the trouble Paul got into at Ephesus. Oh boy, the uh, disciples of the goddess Diana. Oh boy, they stirred up all kinds of trouble for Paul at Ephesus. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, two-legged beasts that is, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. You ever heard that? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die? Verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Boy, that's, that's, that's the truth. I wish parents would tell their kids that. Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. And sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. You see, we should all be teaching others. Uh, Christianity is getting to be a super hated faith. So, but some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool! That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. You see, people, you take a seed and you put it in the ground. The seed is gone, but a new plant arises out of its place. So the seed dies but the plant is a new plant, and it lives, right? That's what it's talking here. 
But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly if Paul's talking about planets and stars in the sky or if he's talking about angelic here. I'm not sure. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Terrestrial has reference to the earth. Okay? But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. I guess he's talking about uh, planets and what have you, because the next verse, this is what you call parallelism. You know, celestial bodies. For verse 41. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, our flesh. It is raised in incorruption, our resurrected bodies, people. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, and that was Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Think about it. The last Adam had the same mother and father as the first Adam. Who was the mother of the first Adam? Well, I mean, you could argue and say Mother Earth, but, uh, you know, if God took the dust of the earth and formed a body and then he breathed into him the breath of life, right? So the first Adam was, I mean, Adam's called the son of God. And... The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Adam, uh, Jesus is called the last Adam because he had basically the same mother and father as the first Adam. Sort of, kind of. I mean, yeah, a lot of people will try to tell you that Mary was uh, Christ's mother. I don't believe that because sin nature passed upon all of mankind. So if Mary was God, Christ's actual, her DNA was actually used, uh, then he would be subjected to the sin-corrupted DNA. Now, she carried Christ, but that's why the virgin birth. That's why if you got a Bible that doesn't say virgin, as in the virgin birth, throw it in the garbage. See, Christ was a very special creation. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Mary. Okay? I mean, I'm sure Mary was a wonderful woman. Uh, God the Father decided to use her and uh, as a special vessel, you know? But why would Christ be called the last Adam? That's to let you know he had the same mother and father as the first Adam. So, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit was that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. See, Adam was from the earth, and the second Adam, the second man, is from the is the Lord from heaven. See, Christ came from heaven. Adam didn't come from heaven. Think about that. All right, let's see. Verse 48. 
as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Praise the Lord to that. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, we're going to get a resurrected body. We're going to be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Uh, people, if you don't know where the last trump is, read Revelation. There's seven trumps, and Christ returns at the seventh one. And then there's people who will tell you, well, the seventh trump's not the last trump. You, you Really, there's an eighth one? You know, these pre-trib rapture people... They won't touch this verse with a 10-foot pole. All they can do is, they can't explain it to you, so they'll just explain, they try to explain it away. Oh, the last trump. No, 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 that's, you got it all wrong, Bob. You're all wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you know what? Argue with God when you meet him. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of, a, of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right, let's take a look at uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. I'm going to try to finish this up pretty quick. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I th say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Remember something, people. If you're led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. And what are all these Noahides and Messianics, what do they always want to do? They want to put you under the law. Because... They're not led of the Spirit. That's why they, they, law, that's all they can tell you. Oh, the law, the law, the law. But if you're led of the Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is your guide in your life, you're not going to be under the law. Now, so let's take a look. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Uh, that word uncleanness has 
reference to sexual immorality. It doesn't mean that you forgot to take a bath, okay? Lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Oh, let's talk to the Messianic Jews. Let's ask the Messianic Jews to tell you about uh, Kabbalah. Uh, they won't they won't talk about that. No, 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 no. They won't talk about that because they don't want to expose witchcraft within their oh their golden calf, so to speak. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now listen to this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. See, when you got love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, don't listen to them about keeping laws. Because if you love your neighbor, you're not going to kill him. You're not going to steal his stuff. You're not going to try to commit adultery with his wife. You know, if you walk in the Spirit, you're fulfilling the law. And trust me, I'm a hypocrite. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another envying one another. Good advice, huh? All right, let's finish this up. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions, and tribulations that ye endure. Persecutions and tribulations, which is trouble? What? Tell that to the people that listen to TBN and Benny Hinn and all those guys. Persecution and tribulation? No, 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 no. They don't believe that. <sighs> In all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. You see, right now, if you're in, if, if you're in Christ and uh, doing what, you know, you're supposed to be doing, you're going to suffer. But guess what? God's going to recompense them. Uh, it's called payback, people. Well, that's the Bob translation. Now, I know, I just, you know, talked about not keeping the law, you know, if you're led of the Spirit, but in Revelation 12, 17, and the dragon was wroth, angry, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
And Christ gave us the two commandments. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. Right? Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What city? New Jerusalem, people. All right, let's go back to Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, verse 5. Well, let's do verse 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels." In flaming fire, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, people. What can I tell you? All right, well, that's the end of this. Um, this is the end of this series. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.